All right, so if you edit remotely amongst a team of different editors or you have remote editors, you've probably run into a couple of issues. The first one is dealing with the large file sizes that videos create. Uh, and the other one is how to manage project files, whether you're a premier project file, your final project file, how to collaborate, share project files, and also make sure that you have the right version, you're not overwriting stuff, you don't have two people opening the same file at the same time, which would be a disaster. So in this video, I'm gonna dig into an app that solves a lot of these problems, and it's called PostLab. So PostLab is a collaborative editing hub. It is one-stop shop for managing all of your editing project files, blocking and unlocking project files, collaborating with anyone all over the world. Your Premiere project files, Avid Media Composer, Final Cut, you can handle all of them. It also has a virtual hard drive where you can share and collaborate uh, with actual files, which I'll dig into in a bit. But it's management in handling all the project files for editing. It's specifically built for editing is really amazing. It saved us a lot during 2020. It made things a lot easier than all the other issues that we've had with sharing project files and trying to collaborate remotely. But with all that said, I don't use it anymore. And I'll get into that later in the video. Why? Not by choice, but I had to stop using it. All right, so first up though, let's sort of dig into an overview of like how you can handle editing media remotely and some workflows. So if we dig into what our actual media consists of with editing, usually we've got our project files, our Premiere project file, Final Cut library, which is a little bit different. And then we have our actual media files and we need to edit our files that we're recording on our camera. And these files can be big. They can be usually gigabytes on the small end, but I mean, these files can also be terabytes or total of terabytes of files, depending on how big your project is. Now, whether you're editing remotely or in the same physical space, uh, even with these large files, you tend to have to do things with them to make them a bit more manageable to edit with. And so the proxy workflow is something that has sort of been pretty much all editing apps support that now natively built in. So you can import your original files. Let's say these are like gigabyte big files. It will render out a proxy version, which is a much smaller, more compressed file. So the quality is not going to be there, but that's not the point. The point is you just want to see and hear what's happening. That's good enough that we can edit with. They're smaller files, so they're easier to move around, easier to send, uh, less taxing on your computer. So if you have a slower computer, you might also have to render proxies anyways, because it'll make things a lot easier and move faster. And this is really what we need to do to just make the edit. And then once we're done, we need to relink to that original media. So we have the highest quality file to export once we're done with the video. But the actual editing process we can just do with proxy files. So that's one part of the workflow. We can take our original media, turn it into proxy files. So now just overall, we have less media to deal with if we're sending files between computers across the internet. Now, the other issue is the actual project file itself. And especially if you have multiple editors, maybe tag teaming on a project, how do you share that project file, that Premiere project file, that Final Cut library, then make sure that the version is always up to date. And how do you make sure that that's an, an accessible spot that each editor can get? So things we've tried in the past, and you might've tried this too, is putting your media, your project files in Dropbox. Terrible idea because there's no way to file lock or check in or check out that project. So if you have one, your media, your Premiere project file in, in a Dropbox folder, one editor opens it up, Another editor, if they're working on that same project, they have no idea unless, you know, you have a system of telling someone on Slack or whatever, hey, I have this project open, do not open it, which is not a great system. There's no way for them to know that they should not also open that project file, which then will lead to best case, just Dropbox, upload, Dropbox uploads a separate version, a, a conflicting version of the file. Worst case, your file is now corrupted and unreadable. So those are our two issues. And that's the frame of mind I want to come into when we jump into PostLab. So let's start with the project file issue first. So that's where PostLab really, what it's built for and really, really shines. So digging into the hierarchy here, we've got our uh, productions, which is sort of like a big bucket of whatever project you're working on. And that's where you can put your project files inside along with some other files. You've got your team, so you can add your, even if you're just using this for yourself, totally cool. Uh, but you can also add your team members here and they all have access to all of your productions. All right, so now I'm in our new territory media production, uh, which is a bucket that sort of contains, as you can see, all of our various project files. These are all Final Cut libraries that are inside this bucket. And so if I jump to this, uh, our YouTube library, we can see that it has some options here. And so the things that really shine with PostLab is you're able to lock and unlock project files. So if I want to say here, okay, I want to start editing this, it's now going to make sure I have the most recent version of this Final Cut library. And I'll talk about the libraries in a second if you're familiar with Final Cut's structure. It's going to lock it make sure I have the most recent file, and then it's going to open up this project file 
or this library on my computer. Now, if someone else were to come and open, and you can see here, there's a lock icon. It's unlocked because I have it open. But if someone else on the team were to come and try to open this file, it would say, see they, they would see that it's locked. And there'd be a big red banner here saying like this project is locked by user. Contact them if you need to open this file. And while it's opening, so we can see we have a uh, version lock here. So also these are all the previous versions, when they're opened, who they were opened by, and then notes of like what happened in that version, what was done to that version. And the other cool thing too is also these versions are all saved so I can restore and jump back to any of these versions if I need to go to a past instance of it. All right, let's talk about the libraries in general. If you're familiar with Final Cut Project libraries, when you import media, there's an option of if you want that media to be ingested directly into the library. So it copies the media, puts it inside the library, which is really like a container. It looks like a file, but it's a bucket, a container that has a bunch of files inside it. So the default would be that it imports the media into your library, but what you want to make sure nothing gets imported into your library and your library just stays a small file size with just your projects. And if you do have media inside your library, PostLab will give you a warning, be like, hey, there's media in your library. You need to uh, move it out of the library and just link it as an external file within Final Cut. So I don't have my hard drive connected right now, but inside we have our project file and everything's gonna be offline because I don't have anything connected right now, but we can see that uh, it opens up our project file. And then once we are done with this, we would make our changes, make our edits, quit, close it out, and then leave a log of what we just did. So, so PostLab also detects that we've closed out Final Cut. So then it'll prompt us, hey, like upload your work, but leave a note about what changes you wanna make and then we'll click upload. You can also see here, because all of those files were offline, when you, before you even open the files, it'll give you a warning, it can give you a heads up of like, hey, what files are detected or if anything's offline, uh, so you don't have to open up and check the project yourself. And so now it'll upload that project file back to the server and synchronize it, and now it'll also show that this project is unlocked, so anyone else on the team can now open it and lock it themselves if they need to make changes. That's like the very basic version. Now, another interesting workflow with this is you can create multiple libraries and maybe you have a project file, a Premiere or Final Cut file that is more of your media library where you're storing all your files. That's more of gonna be a reference library. And then each editor has their own active editing library. And so the reason you might do that is so you can jump over to another project that has just your media. And you'll see here, you could open a copy. So opening a copy is going to duplicate the project file, open that project file. And this is really like a read-only version of your project. So any changes you make here, they're not gonna be saved. So one workflow would be you have your media, you open up your one library with your media, and then you go back, you open up your active library that you're editing in, and then you can just find the media and then copy it over to your active project that has your actual timelines, your editing, and make your edits there. Uh, useful if you have multiple editors all working on the same media, so you don't have that issue of like people waiting to unlock and lock media, they can just copy it in. So digging through some of the other uh, features that we got here, an activity log, so you can just kind of see what's been opened and uh, closed with the, with the users. Um, you have a task list, so you can add task reminders, sort of a to-do list. Um, we've, we never use this. Uh, it's super basic and we have project management tools for that. So uh, it's a bit of an extra that we've never used. And then inside our uh, project files, you can see some of these have colors. So there is a status option where you can uh, tag different libraries with status, just internal use of if you need to keep track of something. And then when you're starting out or setting up, or you need to make a new project, uh, you just click the plus here. And the other useful thing is you can either create from scratch or create, uh, you can import an existing project. Uh, so if you already have your existing Final Cut projects or Premiere projects, you can import them directly into here. You don't have to like copy stuff over and start from scratch. Uh, the other cool thing too is you can create a uh, template of your projects and put it in a template folder. So if you, you have a file structure, bin structure that you like to reuse, uh, you could create a version of that, put it in the template folder, and then when, every time you make a new uh, project, you can just refer to that template uh, and save some time. So now the other really cool built-in feature that also makes this really shine is its Drive feature. So Drive, uh, I did not do a run through before I started recording this and I upgraded to Ventura a few days ago. Uh, and so I think I need to reinstall the drivers because they're not currently working. But anyways, let me pretend the drive does work. Uh, so drive, it basically mounts a virtual hard drive to your computer. So this drive just shows up like another externally mounted drive. 
But the magic is it happens almost in real time. So it's a partnership with LucidLink, which has this technology where it can create a virtual hard drive on your computer. The files are stored in the cloud. Uh, but as long as your internet is decent enough, you can play back media and stream in real time. The things that make this work really well is you should have a, a hard drive that has a big enough cache where you can dedicate enough space to it so it can kind of download these files in the background. Uh, but once you're done, you can clear these files out or it automatically clears them out. So it doesn't really take up space on your computer. So you can have, I've run this using maybe uh, 200 gigabytes dedicated to the cache, um, but I have access to terabytes of data on this uh, virtual drive. And so going back earlier, what I was talking about with the proxy workflows, within PostLab, we can point Final Cut, point Premiere, uh, make sure make the media folders folders on this virtual drive. So then every time it opens those files, it is looking at the proxy files that we now have stored on our virtual drive. So the proxy files get rendered, they're on the virtual drive. And now all of the editors, anyone that logs in, they just mount to this virtual drive and they instantly have access to these proxies. And then if they use other media, they can just throw it into this virtual drive. And now everyone has these files and they're all in sync. And it's the performance wise, it works a lot better than Dropbox. It works a lot better than any other virtual file sharing program that I've had, it just shows up as another hard drive. All the files are there. There's no like downloading in the background. It just does it for you and it works phenomenally well. So one more thing, kind of forgot about this, but the other super powerful thing about PostLab, going back to my case study of if you've tried to share project files and you put them on, either you email them back and forth or you put them on Dropbox, but let's say even just you email project files back and forth. When you open them, you're going to also realize that the big issue too is you're going to have all the media offline because whatever editor edited it, let's say they have their external hard drive with whatever name and their folder structure of where they stored this media. That's where all of the file links are going to be pointing to. You get the project file, you open it up, you have the same media, but you probably might have it in a different hard drive, different naming system. Now you've got to relink all that media to your media. And it goes back and forth where like every time you send it back and forth, everyone has to relink the media depending on where it's at. Big pain in the butt. This is the other thing where PostLab shines. Not only does it have the check-in check-out of the project libraries, but it keeps it specific to where you store your media. So if you open the project library, you link the media to your files and then upload it again, check it back in. Another editor opens it up. First time they're gonna have to link the media to wherever it's stored on their computer. But then once they do, whenever you open the project file back up again, it's going to remember where you stored your media and relink to it. And same thing, once you check it back in, other editor opens it up, it remembers where they stored their media. So it keeps the project file unique to you and your file locations, so you don't have to keep relinking the media every time you open it. Really, really handy. So that's PostLab in a nutshell. I, I feel like I've sounded like a very big fan of it, but at the beginning of this video, I did mention that I don't use it anymore. So here's the issue. PostLab only supports Mac. I have been bringing more editors on the team. They are premier PC users. So I have not been able to use PostLab. I have talked to them. I have talked to their support. They keep saying, they've been saying 2022, 2022 is almost over that they're gonna bring uh, PC support. Uh, so sadly, I have had this license of multiple seats that I have not been able to use because it is not cross-system. It does not work on PC. Uh, so I, I think my license is up soon. I'm gonna have to like cancel it because I just, we've just been sitting dormant. Um, so we've shifted to other workflows. So it's sad for me to say that I've not been using PostLab as much of a fan uh, as I am of it. So if you're watching this, Hedge, which owns PostLab, please get PC support out soon. The other thing that I, I wish had some more improvement is permission access and permission settings. If you add someone to your team, they have access to everything in your entire team. So all the productions, all the files, everything on uh, Drive, they could access all the folders. So there's no permission level settings. Um, if someone's on your team, they get access to everything. I wish there was a bit more control over that to just give people access to some productions or some folders on Drive. But uh, besides that, as I said, PostLab, awesome tool. I just wish it had PC support. Big deal breaker for us currently, but I hope that they bring it soon and that we can get back on board with PostLab uh, because it's extremely handy in just managing all of these project files and keeping edits on the same page and sharing and collaborating. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's more things I didn't dig into, PostLab, I mean, it can be, uh, it's probably a bit of a complex uh, video in explaining the workflow. So let me know in the comments if you need more uh, of an explainer on some aspects of the workflow uh, that I mentioned, or working remotely, working across a team of editors remotely. Uh, happy to answer that stuff. If you found this video useful, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.